Here's a submission from Chase H.J., who has several uh, specific issues that he wants to look at. One of the things he asks is, do my gyros seem noisy? And I, so I've got the gyros up. They're at the default 30% filtering or 30% 30, 30 smoothing and zoomed out to 10%. They don't look very noisy to me. They're, they're a little bit thicker than pencil thin. Like here, right here, I would say it's like pencil thin. And here you can see they've thickened up a little, but uh, there's nothing, nothing extreme there. If you're talking about this part of the beginning where the motors are idling, it's quite normal to see them a little noisier there. That's just, that's, that's because they're very low speed, low RPM, low frequency, and they're getting through the filters a little more. As soon as you throttle up, you can see that goes away. So, no, your gyros don't look terribly noisy. And if we look at them with zero smoothing, you can see they thicken up some, but maybe that's normal with zero smoothing. Anyway, uh, so nothing too extreme there. This doesn't strike me as, an, as a very vibration-prone copter. Prop wash oscillations on hard turns. Uh, that's, that's, you know, that's a very fine-tuned thing to work out. And uh, you just got to kind of work your P and your D around until you find the best combination. If you are running, if you are running at a high loop time, let's see what we got here. Where is the loop time in this? Mm. Hello, where's the loop time? Gyro off, gyro soft hertz at 100, that's fine. Loop time 500, so you're at 2 kilohertz, that's fine. If you want to try 4 kilohertz, assuming your board can do it, which most of them can, uh, it's a naze. Well, I don't know if I'd go 4 kilohertz on a naze. Maybe never mind. Uh, 2 kilohertz may be the best you can do. We might do slightly better with 4 kilohertz uh, and prop wash, but eh, maybe not. And uh, what you're doing here with the filtering, the gyrosoft hertz, of 100, that's good. Having that filter as high as you can get away with helps with prop wash oscillation, that's for sure. Um, eye gain grows until a hard move. Well, if by the way, you say I get some pitching when dropping the throttle, eye gain might still be low. Yes, absolutely. If you get pitching when you chop the throttle or, or punch the throttle, I would raise eye gain on pitch. Uh, if it gets to the range of uh, below 70, I wouldn't even really worry. Uh, above maybe 80 or 90 or certainly by 100, I would start to worry that something more severe was up. But below about 70, any anything in the 60s or below, uh, I, f I feel like that's quite normal in my experience to get a solid attitude hold in response to aggressive throttle moves. Eye gain grows until a hard move. Let's have a look then at uh, your roll axis and see what the eye gain is doing, or the eye term, what the eye term is doing. The gain is the number that controls uh, how much the eye term grows. And so if we just go back to the beginning, let's, let's do that. We can see that eye starts at zero, as you would expect. And then as you begin to fly, now this is r the roll axis, so we would expect that the, the eye term would stay close to that, close to zero because there often is not a very strong persistent bias uh, on the roll axis like there is on the pitch axis. We can see that here you're, you're in a move. The eye term has grown a little bit and is being capped. You can see that it just flattens out. It's hitting a hard cap that Betaflight imposes to keep the eye term from growing excessively during extreme moves like flips or rolls. So this is quite normal. And then as you return to center stick, the eye term goes back to doing its job. And, and you can see that sometimes it goes left and sometimes it goes right, uh, but it doesn't seem like it's doing anything out of the ordinary. I think what you're seeing is you say it grows until a hard move. You're seeing the capping come in on a hard move, and the rest of the time it's just doing its job. So there's nothing untoward here. On pitch, you should see, uh, you typically will see the eye term go positive. And the reason is that for whatever reason, the uh, the copter, when it's flying, wants to pitch back a little bit. And the eye term adds some pitch forward force to counteract that. So you can see that as you start, the eye term is zero. And as soon as you start flying, the eye term goes positive. So it's counteracting some of that pitch back force. 
and it continues to grow. Here it's falling. Here you're doing some, some moves. It's just wiggling all over the place. So again, nothing out of the ordinary here. It's just doing its job. Yeah, no, nope, nothing out of the ordinary here. Um, oscillations on idle can be ignored. You can just ignore oscillations on idle. The copter is always noisy on idle because the props are spinning relatively slowly. So yeah, no complaints here. Nothing really, nothing really crazy here. If you're getting prop wash oscillations on hard turns, uh, I, you know, you, you can stack the deck in your favor by having excellent ESCs with great braking. XM28 ESCs are good ESCs. They should be able to do quite well. If you want to try to upgrade to some BL Heli S ESCs, they should do better. Uh, but there's, you can get, especially if you're running Betaflight uh, 27 and higher, you can get very good prop wash performance out of any of the sort of top notch crop of, of gear that's out lately, F390 ESCs and so on. You don't say what your motors are here. They're probably okay. But if there's something like an 1806 motor, like what is the Eashin Falcon 250? Is that a is that a rebuild or is that just a frame? Let's find out. Any minute now. Yeah. Um. So it seems like you're probably running this guy. It's interesting because it's you must just be running the frame, right? Because. You say you've got XM28 ESCs, unless it just comes with those. Does it come with 2204 motors? Oh my goodness, my computer is so slow. This is why I don't live stream from the road. Oh my goodness, so slow. Come on. Come on, computer. Get with it. Where's the product details? Where's the, that's not product details. These are just videos. Oh man. Oh, does this really have inclined motors? You don't want that. You don't want inclined motor base. You know, don't use that. If you're using that, don't use that. It makes the copter fly really weird. It has some weird roll and yaw coupling. Don't do that. Adjustable camera angle. That's what you want. Um, uh, Where's the dang motors? Yeah, see, this is a fairy 20 amp ESC. So I don't think you have this exact copter. Maybe you just have the frame with your own gear. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so for prop wash, it's very tricky to tune out. You just got to play with P and D and try and find the best combination of P. It needs to be high enough so you get good flight response, but as low as you can get away with to minimize prop wash. And then you add D and, and you find the value of D that minimizes prop wash without having too much uh, D term oscillation. And it's really a balancing act. So, uh, But the good news is that if the only thing you have to complain about if was prop wash oscillation, your copter would be flying pretty darn well. Uh, so anyway, keep flying, keep practicing, happy flying.